Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Wednesday, June 16th, 2010. Well, folks, the markets initially started lower and are now moving higher across the board, not by much by any stretch. The NASDAQ is just up about 10 to 12 points. The Dow is up about 22 points, and the S&P 500 is up about three and a third. So really not a big move up, but the key is, again, the markets have had these huge gains over the last week if you go back on the charts and I'm going to show you this right now go back basically a week ago to last Tuesday the markets bottomed out at 104.50 you are now nearing 112.50 that is a difference of eight dollars on the SPY or about seven to seven and a half percent gain in the markets just in one week's time which is a tremendous gain for any market out there now again what does that mean does it mean we're extended short term it does mean that we're extended short term but it doesn't necessarily dictate a pullback if you look at the coincidence between this move up, folks, you will notice that it is options expiration week. And remember, the deal with options. Institutions sell the options to the individuals. All right, so they're selling puts and calls. What they want is wherever the majority of options are, whether they're more puts or more calls, they're going to try to push the market in the opposite direction of those. So in many instances, because the market was so negative about a week to two weeks ago, every amateur out there, every retail investor was buying puts. Therefore, it's by just common sense and understanding psychology, the market should move up in the opposite direction, and that's exactly what we've seen. So all those people that if you go in the last two weeks or so were buying puts on the market here, and we saw the drop down, they're all thinking they're in the money, they're buying more and more puts as the market looked like it was going to collapse and all the negativity was out there. Now all of a sudden, we're seeing that the market is not so much to the downside, in fact, moving up, and that's going to cause these options to expire worthless. And again, when expire worthless, when these options expire worthless, what do we know about those institutions? They're making the premium. They're making the amount that the premium was sold for on those options. So again, a game somewhat rigged in the options market. Oftentimes, you'll see this going into an options expiration week, so it should not surprise anyone. And again, if you go to last week, I noted about some key levels on charts on various stocks that were leading stocks hitting a major support. We noted the psychological impact of the market, and ultimately, we went bullish mid last week, early last week, and have enjoyed this rally on the long side, making money all the way through. And again, I'm holding a few positions left over, but for the most part, I've taken my profits now and moved back into a majority cash. And that's the smart thing to do. There are a couple small caps out there today. Just a little while ago, I was starting to note some small cap biotechs coming off the lows pretty nicely, and that may be the next area to see the run in. Now, you're looking at the 60-minute chart here, and I showed you the 60-minute because I wanted to show you Tuesday's lows right here and the massive move up, and you can see we're actually hitting into a key pivot right up here at the 112.35. Now, where does that come from? I'm going to show you here right here. If we scan back all the way to the 19th of May, you can see this, see this drop here and then the bounce? The high pivot right here on that bounce is actually at the 112.35 level. So that's what that resistance is. That level for a target for today was given out to the Research Center last night in the nightly video inside the Research Center, and you have full access to that if you're a Research Center subscriber, including everything else, including the Pro Trader watch list, hot charts and alerts, uh, technical tactics, daily market reports, and so on and so forth, all right? So again, these levels continue to be unbelievably accurate, and I'm going to go back to the time frame right here. You can see we're actually pulling off of that. If I go to the intraday, you're starting to see a little bit of a pullback. This is the same line up on the charts that you can see right here at the 112.35 level, and that's your current resistance level that the market's hitting up against and seeing a little bit of a pullback. But remember, what are the keys about this week? Options expiration and light volume. 130 million have traded today, folks. We're on pace for the third day of around 200 million. When we were having down days, we were doing 300 to 400 million. So you're basically doing half the volume in this market that you were on the downside and you have to be careful about that because that does tell us that while the market could continue to rally and ultimately I have targets in certain areas that I've talked to my premium members about there is a chance and there's a good chance that this market because the light volume is showing no institutional participation on the long side will eventually roll over it's just a matter of finding that spot when is it going to roll over right so again listen to the videos at night the 40 minute long videos in the research center that will tell you everything you need to know the plays live calls and live trades are posted on the hot charts and alerts. Watch lists are posted in the Pro Trader Watch List. Everywhere you want, everything you want is available in that research center. And by the way, we have the big webinar this weekend, Saturday. Again, it's a five hour course, intensive training course on some of the key methodologies that we utilize. And again, they do continue to work. You can apply all those methodologies to work immediately come Monday after that webinar. All right, now let's talk about a few other things. What's driving this market up today? Is it commodities? Well, let's take a look. Take a look at the USO. The USO is up today, so you do see oil inching to the upside. Oil was basically 
flat early on, but ever since here, you can see the market starting to move up in oil, and that's taking a little bit of a push. Now, let's take a look at the dollar. The dollar is slightly positive, but really on the flat line. You can see the dollar is just chopping sideways. The interesting thing about that is that's telling us that, again, we're probably on support right here on the UUP, and the dollar index is the UUP right here, and there is a support line. These lines are very, very important to understand. You can see this pivot low right here, so you do have support. If this were to break, you're going to the 50 moving average on the dollar daily chart. Now, let's go over a couple other things. So the dollar is essentially flat today. Oil is getting a little bit of a rally as things again calm down. Remember, as things subside, as the panic subsides, people are going to start to say, well, maybe the economy, maybe the global economy is not as bad off because of Europe. That means if it's not as bad off, demand starts to come back in for commodities like oil demand, or at least anticipated demand. It's not true demand. It's just anticipatory. But if that's the case, then it's going to drive the price of oil up. And we're seeing that today. Then if you go to the GLD, folks, the GLD is pulling back a little bit. It had a nice gain yesterday, but is now pulling back today. You can say, again, there's a mix going on here. Part of it is the flat dollar. So if the dollar was down, I'd think that oil would, uh, gold would be more on the flat line to positive. But because the dollar is flat and you have a de deflation in the possible fear in the market because things seem to be quieting in Europe, that means that the fear trade on gold is starting to subside. That means you'll see a little bit of selling in gold. All right, So that's the little gold trade right there that you want to pay attention to. And then if we go to what's leading the stock besides the oil, oil front, take a look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, again, yesterday, huge move up yesterday. Let me shrink down this chart. You can see, look at this move up yesterday. And we talked about this, and actually about three days ago on Friday, I said after the big rally on Friday and the big squeeze, I said, listen, if we're going to really continue this rally, and even on Monday and so forth, if we're going to continue to see this upward momentum move, um, you have to see the financials participate. So far, it's been a commodity rally. You've seen stocks like AK Steel, US Steel, ExxonMobil, Chevron all get huge bounces. The financials really weren't bouncing. Some days, even Goldman was down when the market was up a 2% or 1%. That had to stop. And ultimately, I said in the Monday video that if you're going to see this resume, you have to see those financials participate. Well, guess what? They are participating now. You can see yesterday. You can see continuation today in Goldman Sachs. JP Morgan, same thing. Look at this move up on JP Morgan. All the way down here, moving all the way up, pretty much staying in a tight, tight range. You could almost draw a trend line right underneath here, which is kind of interesting because it does give us a possible breakdown trend line. If uh, JPM were to break here, it probably goes right to the 50 intraday as a target level down here. So again, Again, very, very key things to watch here in the market. But again, now you've had the commodity stocks rally. The, gold, the Goldmans and the financials are starting to rally. There's some key moves on Freddie and Fannie today. By the way, ugly, ugly moves on Freddie and Fannie. Down not quite 50%. They were down much, much more. But you've had a nice bounce back on Freddie here and Fannie, FNM. Let's take a look at that. As you can see, big bounce, but the drop here bordered on over 50% at one point today as they were announced that they were going to be delisted. And again, remember, a lot of funds cannot hold delisted stocks in their portfolios. Therefore, they have to dump. And you see, you've seen basically 300 million traded on this FNM right here, and which is a huge, huge dump. I mean, it's, it's, it's an ugly move, but these have recovered off their lows at this point in the day. The markets as well. In addition, BP came out today and said that they were going to create a uh, escrow account for claims of $20, bil $20 billion like the president asked. The stock was trading down lower. Once that announcement came out, the stock jumped up, and that's also helped give the market a little bit of a positive bias here in the late session or the mid-afternoon session here. So again, that's what we're seeing. If we go back to the spiders, guys, a couple other things I just want to point out. Again, notice the trend line. If you get through this 112.35 level, you're going to look for 112.55. That'll be just an intraday resistance. If you get through that, ultimately, you'll see 113. Markets are short-term extended, but it doesn't mean you're ready to pull back because it's options next week and because volume is dying out. There will be key levels and key trades announced here, folks. Again, when I start to take shorts or when I go in some long, small cap, long plays, I will give those out in the hot charts and alerts. You need to be a member to get those. And those, again, were basically batting 100% over the last couple weeks here in the market. Unbelievable money being made left and right. In all in all, enjoy the rest of your day. Make money. And again, I'll be making money in the intraday stock chat as well as in the research center. Have a wonderful afternoon, folks. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.